Hello, I am Chuck Bartlebaugh, the director of the Be Bear Aware campaign, and we're at the campus of the University of Montana to talk about bear spray. Bear spray is something you should carry when you're out in the field and anytime you're in bear country, which is all of Montana. Um, it, was in, it was researched and developed here on campus by a woman by the name of Carrie Hunt, who's now a biologist and is also famous for her work with the Carillion bear dogs. We're going to run you through a course that shows how to deploy bear spray if the bear is just within 60 feet in charging, 30 feet in charging, and two scenarios within 15 feet where you may have been taken down by a bear and have to spray it while you're being attacked or you have a friend that's being attacked and you need to spray it. And so from here we're going to go out in the field and show you those scenarios. Before we show you the four scenarios on how to deploy your bear spray, there's a few minor things that become major when a bear is charging. Number one, you need to get your bear spray out of your holster quickly, so practice removing it from the holster. The other thing is, hold the can firmly. If you hold it loosely, it'll tilt up and spray over top of the bear and the bear will come underneath the expanding cloud. That is not good. As you pull it out of the holster, remove the safety clip by placing your thumb in front, pulling back, letting it drop, grasping the can firmly, and then you deploy your bear spray with a lot of gusto. Let that bear know you do not want it to approach you, charge you, or make contact by going, no, no. That bear will respond to your facial expressions, to your voice, and to the cloud coming out of the can. And then that if it runs into the spray, it'll divert its charge at that point. Remember, hold the can firmly, take the safety clip off this way, dispense your bear spray with gusto. Use a word like no or stop. And let that bear know it is not supposed to approach you and make sure that and continue spray until the bear diverts its charge. That's crucial. You've heard probably use a short burst, not in a charging, aggressive situation. You want that bear to be well sprayed and to know you're in control of that cloud that's coming at it. Always carry your bear spray when recreating in bear country. Whether you're hiking, jogging, horseback riding, fishing, uh, hunting, have your bear spray ready and have it with you in a fashion you can use. A hip holster, uh, a waist holster, chest holster, or even a shoulder holster. And practice just deploying your bear spray so you can spontaneously take it out and disperse your spray. A charging bear can reach you within two seconds. You must be ready to respond so practice, practice, practice. The kind of bear spray you carry is extremely important. They are not all the same. Some spray for as little as four seconds and some spray for as long as eight seconds. Some only spray 15 feet, others spray for 40 feet. So I have a bear spray that will spray for at least seven seconds go at least 30 feet in a well-automized uh, cone-shaped cloud that the bear runs into. You do not need to aim bear spray. You only project the cloud in front of the bear. If the bear gives you the opportunity to start spraying when it's 60 feet away, do that. Spray to a point 30 feet in front of you creating a cloud that the bear will meet. Remember, charging bears can reach 30, 30 miles an hour and will be at that point within a second. So you need to start spraying ahead of time when a bear is charging from 60 feet away. At 30 feet, the bear will enter the expanding cloud of bear spray. This will cause effects on its eyes, nose, mouth, throat, and lungs. It will not be able to inhale and exhale deeply, affecting the bear's ability to continue to charge. 
Once the bear lo loses these abilities, it will divert its charge and turn and run off. Do not stop spraying. Keep spraying until the bear turns and runs away. When the charging bear meets the 15 foot point, it'll be ready to divert its charge. It'll have lost all of its ability to see, hear, breathe, and continue the charge. Once it starts to turn, keep spraying until it has completed it and is running in the other direction away from you. At 30 feet, it's important that you spontaneously spray the charging bear. Get that bear spray out, direct your arm forward by say, and saying no, stop, and continue spraying. This usually happens when a bear is in a berry patch along a trail or bushes along a trail or coming up from a stream bed and is surprised by you. At 15 feet, the bear should be diverting its charge. If it's not, if it's still charging towards you, continue to spray, but prepare to go to the ground. Pivot around, drop to your knees, lie flat, protect the back of your neck with your hands, and with one of the hands, disperse the bear spray over top of you so the bear does not want to stay in the area that you are playing dead in. Within 15 feet is, is considered immediate impact. The bear is coming from a day bed or an area of hiding like bushes along a trail. You, the bear will probably take you down, swat you, bite you, drag you, whatever it's doing, get your bear spray out and spontaneously spray the area you're in. Once the bear feels the effects of the bear spray, it will stop its attack and leave. At 15 feet, it's considered immediate impact. If someone in your group is taken down, spontaneously spray without any hesitation, both the bear and the person. The bear can do far more damage than the bear spray will, but be prepared, that bear may charge you, so keep spraying till it diverts its attack and leaves the area. Here's a little bit about why bears charge or attack people. You need to know what bears want most of all is to be left alone, not approached, followed, interact with, and absolutely never fed. Some of the reason charges take place is because someone's hiking near fast water, the noise is covering their approach and the bear doesn't know they're in the area. Or the wind can do that as well, and the bear doesn't smell or hear the person approaching and is startled and does a warning charge that may include contact, but just may include uh, kicking dirt up at you. The bear really wants the protection of its space, the area, and its food. A bear that has made a fresh kill often will think you're coming to take it away and will, <clears throat> will defend it. And that bear is extremely dangerous. In all cases, you need to spray. Do not try to figure out why the bear is charging and if it's just a warning charge. If you spray a bear that is not intending to make contact, you have further educated that bear not to charge and not to try to make contact. So that's a very successful activity. But the most important thing is protect yourself, your family, and your friends by spraying downwards towards the front of the bear it, and continue spraying until it diverts its charge. And that will protect, you, protect the bear and protect you as well. Now that we've finished the four uh, scenarios on how to deploy your bear spray, I want to review the important points I gave you at the beginning. And it's absolutely important that you practice removing your bear spray from your hostess holster so you can do it spontaneously. And as you're lifting it out, you put your thumb in front of the curled lip, take the safety off, and then your thumb places right on top of the trigger. But you need to do it with a lot of gusto. You need to say, no, go away, no, and continue spraying at the bear that's charging you until that bear diverts its charge and goes in the other direction. 
No short spraying on a charging, aggressive, agitated bear. Spray until it leaves.